Any of you that have been watching my past videos may be aware of this little phase that I'm going through where I openly discuss faults in my photos and videos and also my evolving embrace of shadow. This appreciation of shadow, as I've mentioned before, is by no means a new concept and in my video, Don't Fear the Shadow, I briefly touch on why I have, up until recently, steered clear of shadow and how I find symbolic meaning in all of that now. But this dissatisfaction up until now has been purely based on feeling and subjective analysis of my own work in comparison to what I would like it to convey. I wasn't able to find objective or academic words to describe what I've been feeling until this morning when I came across this enlightening piece by Jamie Windsor. That video which discusses dynamic range and the lighting technique called chiaroscuro helped me rationally put my thoughts and perspective into realistic concepts. Now I won't discuss dynamic range and chiaroscuro in this video as I feel Jamie Windsor's video beautifully condenses these concepts along with his experience in a manner that I, due to my lack of experience, simply can't. So I'm linking that video down below. I highly recommend it. One thing I loved about that video on a personal level is he ended his piece with a similar set of final words to my Don't Fear the Shadow piece, which gave me a subtle sense of validation, which is always good and I'll take it where I can. But in this video, I want to change things up and briefly go through some photos that I'm relatively happy with where I embraced and emphasized the shadow. And I'm gonna compare that to what these photos would have looked like if I'd given into my fear of shadow and run away from them for lack of a better term. And after that, I'll end off with how this has crippled my video production. Now to paraphrase or condense one of Jamie's statements or shared concepts into a statement of my own, some of us are in the habit of fearing the look of a crushed shadow or a blown highlight. And this fear has us bringing up the shadow and bringing down the highlights. And in doing so, we inadvertently end up with a photo that is flat and that ends up with the viewer not having a place within that photo to which their eyes can be drawn. I'd like to cautiously state that I respect and acknowledge that we all have our preferences and if you find that you're drawn to photos that are a bit more flat in tone, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. We, we're talking about a subjective topic here when we talk about what makes a good photo. Let's go through some examples from my own photos that I'm somewhat happy with and let's see what would have happened if I didn't embrace my shadows. Let's take this guitar for instance, look at the setting with the shadows fully lifted and the highlights take it down completely versus the one with the deepened shadow. I even forced some extra shadow here. Check out how the shadow encourages you to see the guitar. This portrait on the grass, shadows lifted and highlights completely down, kind of flat, almost HDR, but compare it to the right where we have emphasized the shadows in the photo. I did more to it than that, of course, certain hues have been somewhat desaturated, I was going through a phase, but the point remains that the shadow is the clear factor that differentiates these two images. This one here, nothing much to draw the eye to, but bring the shadows down and of course some content aware fill and you get the point. The shadows allow for our eye to be drawn to the shard and I even reduced the dehaze here as well for good measure if I remember correctly. This rooster, lifted shadow versus embrace shadow, not much more to say about that. I'm not quite sure how else to put this, but when you compare these flat shots, the shots where shadow lifting occur, I could potentially argue that the photos to the right are cleaner and just have that professional touch. Obviously, this is all dependent on what it is that you want as an artist. There's pretty much no right or wrong, and I think you know where I'm going with this. Now with videos, when I watch movies and I see dark scenes and pay attention to how little I as a viewer can actually see, I always end up commenting to Julia something along the lines of, wow, that's, that's brave. I myself as a video shooter am too frightened to put out a piece that is this dark in fear of it being too dark. I know it sounds dumb, but only recently have I started embracing shadow in my videos. A massive mistake I've been making is discarding footage that I consider to be too dark. So, oh, I can't see the details in clothing or a lot of my face is missing. And in desperation, I lift the shadow only to introduce noise. So I've discarded most of my darker footage. I probably shouldn't be telling you all of this as I want to come across as being good at what I do, but I am good at what I do. I just, there's always room for improvement. I'm good at product photos and portraits and I'm good at planning around natural and studio lighting, but run and gun, unplanned, there's so much room for error and I tend to find a lot of errors. But the more we make, the more practice we'll get and the better we'll become at getting these unplanned shots 
nailed. So I figured I may share this little piece of new experience. I hope maybe it can serve you well. Needless to say, I am very excited to start shooting more of this dark stuff, especially in video. And I'm excited to keep sharing what I learn as we go along. Did any of you go through this shadow thing? Are you still going through it? Let me know. Feel free to start a conversation with me. I'm always happy to have these conversations. If you made it this far in the video, I sincerely appreciate that. I do hope you enjoyed it. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.